So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this um, second roundtable um, of the working group on uh, euro risk-free rates. Um, I'm happy to see uh, that so many of you are here today, uh, and also that both the, the financial sector and the non-financial sector are, are present here today, uh, which uh, really sends the right signal, namely that the, uh, the reform of interest rate benchmarks uh, cuts across sectors uh, and that it will uh, ultimately affect everyone. So uh, all of you are stakeholders uh, in this discussion. And beyond you, your clients, uh, I mean, your, the whole ecosystem is, uh, is, uh, should, be, should be on board, and I'm glad to see that uh, you, you are on board. Um, the reform process is uh, gaining steam, as you know, uh, precisely uh, one week from now, on the 2nd of October. The ECB will start the daily publication of uh, the new euro short-term rate, uh, ESTR which was selected by the private sector working group to replace uh, EONIA. Uh, ESTR will be based on a broad set of granular money market transactions, uh, which will make it robust, reliable, and representative uh, of the euro money market. Uh, internal preparation for the launch of uh, ESTR uh, is completed, and uh, we had uh, our first stress test already last week. Uh, when uh, the cut in the deposit facility rate of the ECB to uh, minus 0.5%, uh, which was decided by the governing council two weeks ago, uh, became uh, effective. And I'm glad to see, we, are, we were all glad to see that the ESTR responded uh, exactly as expected uh, and the cut was fully priced through. That is, the ESTR went down by exactly 10 basis points. So we have a very smooth and stable money market, which is nice to see. Um, this certainly gives us uh, additional confidence that the uh, ESTR is well designed uh, and reliable uh, and, and captures swiftly changes in market developments. Um, so you could see the launch of the ESTR as the, as the end of a, of a process, as the culmination of a process, and that's what it is. And uh, I, I will also be, uh, 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 take the opportunity to thank very much all the teams here in the ECB on the statistical side and on the market side who uh, worked very hard toward that uh, achievement. Um, but it's also the beginning of another journey. Uh, the launch of uh, ESTR next week uh, means that the clock uh, is ticking. As of next week, uh, the publication of Eonia, uh, as you know, will switch from T to T plus uh, 1, which will set in motion the first uh, changes. So, for example, everyone who has so far relied on Aonia's uh, availability uh, the same day uh, for pricing and valuation would need to postpone uh, those calculations until the next morning. On 3rd of January 2022, um, we'll see the last uh, publication of Aonia. According to our ECB money market statistical data, um, there are still some 13.7 trillion euros of notional amount of Aonia. Uh, OIS contracts outstanding after uh, 2nd of October 2019, so as of next week. And uh, out of these, 3.7 trillion euro uh, will remain outstanding uh, even after 2022, when Eonia uh, will no longer be there. So market participants should uh, exercise special care uh, for the latter contracts so that they're either closed out in time uh, or renegotiated based on the ESTR uh, as recommended by the working group. The transition to the ESTR uh, should also be uh, broad-based across market segments. That is, uh, it should not only be seen as a replacement of uh, Aonia in the OIS market. Uh, market participants should try to find a wider use of the rate, uh, also in cases uh, in which you would typically use an IBOR, for example, in the cash market. There will be a growing demand for uh, euro products re referencing the ESTR, such as notes, loans, uh, also hedging instruments in the derivatives market. The ECB welcomes the uh, quick and wide adoption of these products, reference to the ESTR, and the financial sector uh, is expected to respond to such a demand as more uh, solid and transparent benchmark rates are key elements of public confidence and, and financial stability. So these preparations should uh, start now. Following the launch of the ESTR, the work on Euribor fallbacks should take center stage uh, in the working group agenda. Uh, the fact that Euribor was successfully reformed uh, using the uh, so-called hybrid methodology um, and authorized uh, should not be the reason for Euribor users to postpone uh, the incorporation of fallbacks uh, in their contracts, uh, which is a legal requirement. Euribor was and remains the responsibility of the private sector, uh, and its sustainability in the long run uh, will depend entirely on the private sector. 
In other words, users should be prepared for all scenarios, uh, including the disappearance of this benchmark. Hence, the fallback. Uh, the ESTR is certainly a prime candidate to be considered for use in fallback arrangements. Uh, it will fill the requirements that we deem essential for a fallback. It is credible, transparent, and simple, uh, and it will be available uh, irrespective of uh, market circumstances. Market participants should also focus on fallback solutions which guarantee a certain level of consistency across products in the, Euro, in the Eurozone and also across jurisdictions. Uh, this implies that the experience of other working groups uh, or industry bodies should be a natural starting point uh, in uh, working group discussions. Uh, such consistency uh, has a potential to reduce complexity in internal risk management practices, for example, or for uh, hedging. And there will be plenty of time this morning to discuss all of these uh, issues in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the panels. So a lot remains to be done in making a good use of the ESTR uh, and in implementing robust fallbacks. Uh, I'm, hopeful, I'm hopeful that the working group will approach uh, the remaining uh, challenges with the same energy and thoroughness uh, that it has demonstrated uh, so far in planning for the uh, discontinuation of Aonia. So before I hand over to Stephen Mayor, let me thank the members of the working group uh, and its uh, substructures uh, for the continuing work and dedication. And above all, uh, thanks to the team of ING uh, for their impressive leadership um, and, uh, and time <laughs> dedicated to the project. Uh, big thanks also to the colleagues uh, at the ECB, uh, at ESMA, uh, at the FSMA, at the European Commission uh, for their con continuing support uh, in the organization of the working group. Uh, and its uh, discussions. Uh, and finally, thank you uh, all for participating at today's event, for your interest, for your continuing involvement uh, and contribution to the benchmark reform topic. I hope you'll find today's roundtable useful for your preparations uh, and importantly, spread the word to peers, to partners and to clients of yours. Thank you very much and uh, Stephen, the floor is yours.